Thank you very much, Mr. Ibrahim. Um, now on to our third presentation. Please welcome Mr. Richard Kirby, President at Richard Kirby, uh, Kirby Limited. Thank you very much. Uh, my presentation will be slightly different than what you've heard in the past. It's going to focus on the role of government on data. So essentially, I'm, I'm going to talk about the potential use of data, open government, and the SDGs. Uh, a couple of case studies, one of Los Angeles, and what the many countries are doing with data. We all know open data should be freely used, modified, and shared by anyone. But when I worked a lot in the MENA region and Central Asia, and you ask a very simple question, do you have enough data? And everyone says, no, we don't have enough data. We don't have data. That's the wrong answer. You don't have access to data, but you have lots of data to play with. And the big issue is access to data. And what are governments doing to allow you to have access to data? And I'm sure if I ask you right now, if you raise your hand, does your current government have enough open data available on your portal? Very few of you will raise your hands. So how many of you actually have enough open data on your government portal? Please raise your hand. Nobody. So what does that tell you? It tells you that data is important, but the role of government is also critical. So if governments are not going to use data properly, or allow people to use properly, you actually limit the number of entrepreneurs you can bring up, you limit the amount of innovation you can make, and you limit the amount of development you can do as well. So we know that the data works in all these situations, healthcare, energy, and so forth. So I won't touch that point. So everyone needs data, from suppliers to business to individuals to other government people, your competition. Right? And I'm sure that very few companies would like to share data with their competitors. And the same thing with governments as well. So you have to get to the point where you're sharing all this information to move forward. And if you're unable to share, you're not going to go forward very well. So the SDGs. Climate change is clear. The data is evident. Right? And we had a meeting a few days ago in Egypt. When the first climate change started, uh, meeting took place in France, everyone was on the bandwagon of saying, yes, we're going to support climate change. It's going to cost billions and billions of dollars to help out the developing countries. Move forward five, five years later, in Egypt today, it doesn't cost billions of dollars. It's cost trillions of dollars for this to take place. And the main reason behind that is that governments either were not able to or didn't want to invest the kind of funds necessary to tackle the situation. And same situation with COVID as well. Very few governments were able to handle COVID. They weren't prepared for it. They've never seen this kind of pandemic in there. Right? And even after the data came out and says, this is the solution, politics took over, especially in the US. You had a, a beautiful storm of an election, Trump versus Biden. You had people dying left and right, and everyone's saying, I'm following the science. And the science says, do this. But you, that's not what the science says. You use the science to say what you want it to say. So governments have to be held accountable for this type of stuff because you're the one who will be making decisions that affect millions of people's lives. And if you're unable to actually make the effective decisions, what data tells you to do, all you're doing is creating a bigger issue. A very simple example. I live in Newburgh, New York. If I go to my private doctor and he has a network of other doctors, if I go to any other doctor, my information follows me. If I go to a state hospital, and I go there every single day. I'm going to ask the same question every single day by the same person. What's your name? Where do you live? What's your social security number? Do you have insurance? It's already in the system. All you have to do is verify it, but they don't. They don't. And those are issues, simple issues like that become critical in the long run. Because if you don't have my history and I go to a different hospital next door and my history is not available for them to look at it, something dramatically happened to me personally. So how do you share data? How do you assume that everyone is sharing data? And that's critical as far as I'm concerned. So the SDGs, the World Bank has clearly said that very few countries are going to meet 
the goals of the SDGs. Right? Primarily because the data they're using is not accessible to a wider audience. So, and the SDGs are voluntary, they're not even mandatory. You decide what your goals are, and you, then you try to meet that by uh, achieving your goals. So if countries are behind now, and they had almost 30 years or 15 years to get their act together, and, and it was in 2030s when the SDGs are over, talking about less than eight years from now, and you're still way behind in trying to meet these goals, the data is clearly there, the data tells you what to do in terms of education, in terms of health, in terms of industry, in terms of environment. But you're not following it. You're not investing the time to do the work. So the case of LA is a good example. They came up with uh, the Vision Zero situation because they felt that there were so many accidents going around in the, in the city of Los Angeles. So they had this beautiful data research out there and identified every corner where people either got hit by a car or got into another accident, and then what solutions could take place in order to fix this situation. And that was done in 2018. So the goal was to reduce the number of fatalities that actually happened. Fast forward to now, the numbers went way up. So instead of actually fixing the problem, it made the problem worse. Because the solution was this, you had to create bike lanes for the bikes, so they wouldn't interfere with other vehicles. You create bus lanes for the bus, so it wouldn't uh, interfere with other vehicles. But then you shrunk the size of traffic from five lanes down to three lanes. Right? And the decision was, do we want slower traffic, or do we want safety? The decision was, we want a faster traffic because you didn't invest the time to do the problem work, to do the work properly. Right? So you can have great ideas that would actually help develop and save people's lives, but unless government takes that difficult decision, it doesn't really help. This is another one for LA, the smart guide. How many countries in the Meta region right now will actually print negative data about themselves? Any country? Okay. What the LA uh, smart guy did, they said, okay, living in LA, these are the positive aspect of it. And these are the negative aspect of it. So they gave the, the, the renter a clear choice. I have parks, I have uh, good living. Negatively, I might live in a higher crime rate. My rent might be very high. So you have the information for you to make a decision. But every single portal I've seen in the Mena region, there's not one single data element that's negative. And why is that? If you don't put the negative information as well as the positive information out there, all you see is a rose-colored world that nothing ever bad happens in your country. And therefore, you can't have these kind of hard decisions to make. You can't have the kind of discussion that needs to take place in order to fix things. And if you're not going to fix things, it continues to be the same way. This is also a good idea as well. When you have a tough idea, use crowdsourcing. Get all the intelligent people in a room together, give them a very tough decision, provide the data, and let them find a solution for you. Right? In the case of LA, they called it uh, Angel's Lab. They worked with Google. They found intelligent kids, young men and women. They gave them a problem and said, go find a solution, here's the data. Okay. And the innovation that came out of that group was amazing. And if you actually did that in the Mena region as well, you have the same result, because you have intelligent people here as well, but that interaction between the two is not really there, between the, uh, the individuals who have intelligence, the data element people, and the government. Put them together in a room together, and they'll find solutions for you. Crowdsourcing works. It works on a daily basis. Okay, so, as I said, the region has, has uh, substantial challenges on data scarcity and data gaps. Right? But the data is physically there. So take the advantage of publishing data first. Data publish. Data first. That helps everyone else become much more influential. 
and this is my uh, last slides, or this is the last slide, is that the following is that you need to develop a very good data culture, right? Because you have to understand what's important in life. And I know there's tons of data sent all over the place, so lack of data is not the answer. Lack of decision making is the answer. Well, you have to make the hard decisions in order to get the right solution. That's my end of my presentation. I have exactly 10 seconds left, which I made on time. I'm happy about that. But data culture is something that we should all make sure that everyone has, from individuals to the government. Thank you very much.